Here's one, punch biopsy, some deep inflammation, an ulcer, and then something here. Any takers on this? What's that? See, it's kind of thick. See how when I focus up like this, you can see it in focus and the rest of the tissue is out of focus. So that three dimensionality, that's one thing that as much as I love digital slides, that's one thing digital slides don't do really well, at least not without extra help, it seems. Um, and I do use that a decent bit. It's just kind of adds some subtle nuances to the thing. It shows me that this is a thick piece of something in here, thicker than the tissue itself. It looks foreign. I don't yes. know if it's like tick mouth parts. Oh, very good. It is foreign and it is tick. Very good. Yeah, this yellow dense refractile stuff here, this is chitin, right? A type of, uh, I guess, carbohydrate that forms the exoskeleton of arthropods. And, you know, ticks are, are arthropods, arachnids, right? And uh, the uh, mouth part often gets stuck in. So what a tick bite usually will show is the features of an arthropod bite reaction, which, of course, is superficial and deep perivascular dermatitis with usually a bunch of EOs, particularly just like any arthropod bite, uh, EOs down deep, right? You'll often find EOs deep and not just around the vessels, but scattered out here in the interstitial space between the vessels. Sometimes it's hard to tell if EOs are present when there's a lot of blood. See, there's a lot of hemorrhage here and there's, uh, there are also a lot of EOs, but I find it harder to look for EOs. Now here they're numerous, so it's not too bad, but when there's a lot of hemorrhage, you got to kind of hunt a little more for EOs. But I'll tell you, the, the way is that when you go to higher power and you see the EOs there, especially if you flip your condenser, maybe it won't pick up on here, but erythrocytes, red blood cells are smooth, and eosinophils have like little granules in their cytoplasm. Yeah, I can't get it to show up on here, unfortunately, but, but you can see on a light microscope that there are little tiny granules in the eosinophil cytoplasm, and here, look what's happening. The granules are degranulating. They're spilling all the eosinophil granules and eventually they'll start to coat the collagen fibers. And when they get really thick and the collagen starts degenerating, it makes a little cute structure called a flame figure. And we can, that's the classic buzzword for Wells syndrome, um, which is a eosinophilic cellulitis, a kind of idiopathic uh, process that resembles um, dermal hypersensitivity reaction or arthropod bite reaction. But, but I feel like because I actually see, you know, arthropod bites way more often than what true Wells syndrome, I see uh, flame figures and numerous eosinophils, most often probably in bug bites. Look at that. They're like eos all lined up around uh, a adipocyte. Isn't that cool? I don't think it means anything. It's just pretty. I'll have to get a picture of that later. That's, that's really cool. All right, so lots of EOs, superficial and deep perivascular. Sometimes in bug bites, uh, or arthropod bites, you can get um, vasculitis or even thrombi. And look, that's what we're seeing here. See, there's like thrombosed vessel right here. Fibrin thrombi filling the vessel. And then some neutrophil and carioractic debris, nuclear debris here. So there's actually kind of a secondary vasculitis incited by the arthropod bite. You can see that also under scabies. You can see fibrin thrombi under scabies. But all right, back to the arthropod mouth part. Um, so usually when there's a chunk stuck in the, in the skin still, it's usually going to end up being a, a tick mouth part. And ticks have this unique thing that around the dermis, right around where the mouth part is, gets really homogenous, smudgy pink stuff that looks like kind of a mixture between either fibrin or sclerotic collagen. And my understanding is this is kind of like a cement sort of material created by the saliva of the tick that helps like kind of seal the, the mouth part in there. Uh, that's I, I've read that somewhere. Um, and uh, in any case, though, it is kind of a unique feature. So when I see a bug bite that's got an ulcer, uh, that has this real dense, smudgy pink stuff. I tend to cut deeper to see if I can maybe find a tick mouth part. I mean, you could still say, well, it's, it's uh, suggestive of an arthropod bite, and it could be a tick, but I don't see a mouth part. But uh, that's nice. And I've, I've heard that um, stingers, like from a, a bee or a wasp, that are embedded. I've never seen one in my practice yet that I know of, but they can look a little similar to this. I think they have some barbs on them, but they can look kind of similar because they're chitin. And of course, other things like scabies or bot fly or tunga, uh, penetrans, sand flea, all of those will have kind of similar 
um, chitinous kind of exoskeleton, but they'll have different shapes and different locations, right? Scabies is much smaller and is sitting in the stratum corneum. Tunga is like a hundred times bigger than this and kind of in this same location, but massively, massively bigger, way bigger than a regular punch biopsy. Bot fly is also much bigger than this. Um, so you can kind of um, use those clues to put together what's going on. And let's see what happens if we polarize this. You know, not everything that's full and polarizes. So what I found is that you will sometimes get a variable amount. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me put, I got to turn the auto exposure off. It's really hard to, ah, sorry. It's hard to successfully polarize on a camera sometimes because it always wants to correct the light. Let's see if I can do it and get it in focus. Well, that's about the best I can get. You can see kind of a yellowish to even green. It looks almost like apple green, like an amyloid. Isn't that interesting? And then the bright white stuff here are probably little specks of of um, maybe like bandage material or something like that or some, you know, fibers from a, you know, tissue, something like that that has gotten stuck there. So that bright white uh, is usually the polarizing we see like in, you know, synthetic foreign material or you know, little bits of, you know, sand or grit from the, the soil. But uh, chitin has kind of a unique appearance, a unique look. And um, sometimes things like, like scabies will have chitin, and then it will have little spines that polarize bright white. Look, it'll have little areas that are brighter polarizing. So so just, uh, just so you know, now we've seen what that looks like. All right. And then that'll come back into focus there. Well, that's that's just fun. If you don't like that, I don't know how to make you happy. Tick mouth part with arthropite reaction, and just a good reminder that you can have thrombi and sometimes vasculitis in association with arthropod bites, and also with scabies infestation, you can have thrombi. We published a paper about that a few years ago. And look at all those EOs. Look at that. Amazing. All right. Probably enough, enough from that uh, tick. Let's see what's next.